TV News has learned that the Immigration Canada granted Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou's husband and her two children a travel exemption to leave China and visit her here in Canada in Vancouver amidst the pandemic. This is another example of the stark contrast between Meng's house arrest in her mansion in Vancouver and the imprisonment of the two Michaels, Michael Spavor and Michael Kovrig, who've barely had consular access throughout the pandemic. Their last access was December 15th, and it was virtual. Meng Wanzhou's husband arrived in Canada in October, her children in December. They remain in Canada. Why was this given the green light when Meng Wanzhou is neither a permanent resident nor a citizen? After all, foreign nationals are barred from non-essential travel to Canada unless they are visiting immediate family members who are Canadian citizens or permanent residents. Uh, she's not been a permanent resident since uh, 2009. Again, the two Michaels are still in jail, so why the exemption? I want to bring in M MPs to weigh in on this. Rob Oliphant is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Raquel Dancho is the Conservative's Immigration, Refugee and Citizenship critic. And Jack Harris is the NDP's Foreign Affairs critic. Uh, good to have all of you here. Mr. Oliphant, I, I understand this. I've looked at uh, the regulations and the rules. Uh, why was this authorization given, given the travel restrictions? given the fact she's a detainee, and given the circumstance of the two Michaels, why was her family given this exemption to come to Canada and stay with her? Well, let, let me be very clear to, to state that the very first and the, the overriding concern that we will always have uh, are, is, the, is the health and well-being of Michael Spavor and Michael Colvery and ensuring that we have uh, increased access, uh, consular access to them and are finding ways to improve their lot and get them out of detention. So that's our number one goal. And we have been seeing slow but steady improvement, as Ambassador Barton said when he was recently before our special committee. Uh, when it comes to this issue, uh, Canada is a country of the rule of law, and we're proud of that. And uh, we do not let whether we like someone or dislike someone get in the way of us absolutely fulfilling our responsibilities as a country of the rule of law. Uh, officials at uh, Immigration Refugee Citizenship Canada, IRCC, have an ability to make exemptions uh, for family reunification. Uh, re quarantine requirements are absolutely clear and we have zero tolerance if they're broken. Uh, and they uh, review the situation independently of government. And that's the way we work in Canada. This was an official decision uh, made to make sure that we could follow the Canadian rule of law. And that did mean that uh, a 12 year old, an 18 year old child of uh, Madame uh, Mung was, were allowed into Canada to see their mother and, and her husband. They're residents of Hong Kong and uh, they didn't need a visa. They were able to come in under those uh, our normal uh, ways of coming in. And the, uh, the COVID exemption was made by IRCC officials based on the okay. Canadian rule of law. Okay, um, Ms. Dancho, what's your reaction to them granting a COVID exemption to Meng Wanzhou's family? Well, I think, Evan, my reaction is going to be the same as Canadians across the country. It's, it's outrage that uh, the Liberals have seemingly rolled out the red carpet to allow Meng Wanzhou's family to fly into Canada and be reunited for the holidays. And yet millions of Canadians just were not granted that luxury over the holiday season. So she's being granted special treatment on Canadian soil that Canadians themselves are not being granted. And the second thing is, as you mentioned, the two Michaels have been detained arbitrarily for over two years. They've been denied many of the basic human rights. They've been provided very little consular access, very little access to their families. And yet Meng Wanzhou is allowed to celebrate Christmas with her family in her Vancouver mansion. I think Canadians will rightfully be outraged. And as to Rob's comments, I don't believe for a second that this decision did not come across the Liberal cabinet minister's desk. I think that that is ridiculous and absolutely was decided at the top levels of the civil government. All right, well, but we don't have proof of that right now. But let me just ask uh, Mr. Harris, what's your reaction to this? Uh, this exemption that was granted to the Meng Wanzhou family? Well, it's another example, really, of uh, special treatment being given. We've seen that during the uh, during the course of this, with the uh, uh, special exemptions being given to American travelers and business travelers who didn't really need to come here uh, and were able to get in. Uh, we see uh, lots of people trying. We saw months and months and months of. Uh, committed couples trying to get permission to have their partner come and visit. Finally, after about six months or more, some provision was being made. And here, uh, this person gets uh, easy treatment. I 
find it really do hard to believe that this came across someone's desk in IRCC and the name didn't mean anything and nobody else was consulted. That is hard to accept. Uh, Rob is saying, putting it forth as a fact. I'm not able to contradict them. But, you know, Kate, as, as was just pointed out, Canadians uh, see that, you know, they've been going through a lot of sacrifices. Uh, they particularly concern and, and stark is the contrast, as you point out, between the treatment of Michael Spavor and Michael Kovrig. Uh, they didn't have Christmas with their family. They didn't have consular access uh, for uh, much of the year 2000, 2020, even though this is uh, guaranteed by agreements signed by uh, a treaty signed by China. Uh, it's contrary to their human rights, contrary to uh, common decency. And Canadians have every right to be angry at that, seeing her in her situation as compared to the two Canadians who have been treated so badly. So, Mr. Alphen, so just a last word. Uh, the opposition is probably reflecting a lot of Canadians who have been stuck, who have not been able to re see their parents. Uh, they didn't get any exemption to see parents in different provinces, let alone in different countries. Um, you say this was non-political. There's no evidence that, that I have or the opposition has to contradict you. But why don't you tell Canadians, Actually, I mean, can you tell Canadians yeah. what the exemption is based on? Why would Meng Wanzhou's family get an exemption to come spend Christmas with them at the height of a pandemic? What, can you tell us the criteria? Because it's pretty hard to figure out. So there was no special exemption for Meng Wanzhou's family. What this was is, is several thousand uh, people have had uh, exemptions under uh, the, the regulations that have been put in place around COVID-19 to make sure that we do have family reunification. People do mix up this. And let me, let me be very that clear. Is That's not I accurate. Can well. understand, I can understand people being uh, angry. But what we do, accurate, is we do not stoop She's not a Canadian to the or a permanent countries. resident. She doesn't have the right to these special exemptions. We, so uh, I apologize for interrupting, we, but that is not accurate. And well, okay, sorry, sorry, just one, one second. Let, you know, the Minister of Immigration has permitted 1,300 national interest exemptions. We know other ministers are allowed that liberty as well. So it'd be interesting to know if that's how this was approved, because then it would have had to come across a minister's death or perhaps the prime minister or... Okay, I just, let me just hear Mr. Oliphant's last word on this, because the crosstalk, it's hard to get. Go ahead, Mr. Oliphant. It is very hard when uh, people want to interrupt and and, uh, and go to the lowest common denominator. Okay. What we are is a country of, of the rule of law. We have a way of doing this. Officials are given appropriate instructions to make sure they are following that. Okay. Officials at IRC examined the case. They found that it was lawful, okay. and it happened. Do I understand Canadians' outrage? Absolutely. I do understand that outrage. I do understand the difficulties that Canadian families are having. I understand that people have wanted to cross the border from the United States. All I can say is we understand that outrage, but we follow the rule of law. We ensure that we do things appropriately, okay. and our officials are, are equipped to make the best decisions possible. Okay, but and also